All right. I believe everybody recognizes this particular model of radio. I've done, I think, two or maybe three in the past. I think the last one was several years ago. And um, it flew off the shelf real quick. Um, these are pretty nice little radios. Um, and they perform well on short wave. Um, this one here has a little cosmetic issues. A couple of bars missing here. Bars? What bars? Um, but everything else seems to be okay. Um, the, not, the buttons are all looking good, but they are jammed up. I believe this one here is the model that you have to have this one depressed in order to traverse the dial, uh, to, to browse the dial manually. Uh, all the rest are presets. Uh, the feet are still good on this one. There's no re These here have a bad habit of, of being broken or missing or, or some damage to them. Uh, this one here looks structurally good. Uh, just age, wear, run down like me. <laughs> um, turn it around here. Yeah, uh, this one here has the antenna attached with dowels and long screws to the chassis. And I believe it's hardwired into the chassis. Um, we're going to restring this and hopefully uh, this structure here will be good and solid. We'll put a new we'll put a new uh, power cord on it. The bottom it I don't know that it ever had any screws here. There's usually four screws. Uh, but there's two here, so they, this must be an upgrade or something uh, from then. 6S52740 watt, 117 volt, 50, 50 to 60 cycles. Um, so let me... Uh, this is going to be the next uh, patient on the table. Um, I have the uh, the 529 uh, on the rack in a rack. Uh, I'm going to hold off on that. You know what they say, ladies first. <laughs> uh, this is from the gal in Massachusetts. I was right, Massachusetts. It just takes me a little longer to get with it. Um, it came in this morning. And oh, by the way. Today is Saturday, the 17th or 18th, I can't remember which it is. I think it's the uh, 17th. Yeah, 17th or 8th. Look at the calendar. Okay. So, uh, let's take this out and see what we're up against here. Alright, well, we got the chassis out of the thing. It's got asbestos, like uh, all the rest of them had. Um, so, they, you know, it tells you one thing, you know, it's not necessarily fire. I mean, it puts out, these tubes put out some heat. Well, that one there has been changed out, I think, at one time or another. Uh, but generally, they're a G tube, like this one. And uh, this one here is the rectifier tube. And, um, and you got two of these side by side. It's putting out some heat to the top. Uh, so that's the purpose of that thing is to kind of stave off the heat and so it don't cause a, an issue with fire or anything. It won't burn. <clears throat> so and that's the reason why I make up those foil things and replace these with that. With that. Uh, the antenna is going to get really strong. Uh, it's pretty filthy and dirty. Yeah, the speaker is... I'm hoping that spider can be repaired. Uh, you don't see too many of them around. 
Uh, but I think I think this is a five inch, so uh, I got fresh cones. I ordered two batches this time. Um, there's a little patinian on the um, on the dial face, uh, but I think we can get a lot of that corrected up and get it brightened up a little bit. The um, push buttons are like the typical uh, push buttons of the uh, Zenith types of these. Uh, they're froze. It, that one there is stiff, that one there is stiff, and this one here is froze. So um, we'll do our trick with that thing. The buttons are all <coughs> nice and usable. Um, yeah, the uh, power wires to the lamps are going to be replaced. Those are nearly always an issue. Uh, because they use the rubber wire, see there's a rubber one there, that yellow one, that's to a lamp. This one over here is to a lamp. But they did use some cloth in here. These on this, uh, on this patter uh, are usually an issue. Uh, these here are, will probably have to replace those. A good a good uh, thing we might have to do that uh, all the B plus wiring is, is gonna have to be changed out and it looks like some of the uh, filament lines the supply lines are gonna have to be changed out but it's original so this thing here might might just respond if everything is playing nice. Looks like there's a, a drool of, of solder there. Uh, we'll give this thing, we'll check out the tubes and see if they're viable. And then, uh, yeah, see that leaking there from the uh, E-cap? Um, so this one here is liable to hum like a bird. So, um, we'll get this in on the bench. Right now, uh, I've got the, um, I got the bench occupied with, uh, with the uh, Godzilla radio. It's all back together. Uh, one thing about the Godzilla radio, uh, those particular types, you have to do the alignment. Well, you don't have to do the alignment of the IF stages in the cabinet, although you could. There is plenty of room in there for your hand and everything else that you might need to make any of the adjustments, but if you remember in an earlier segment, I uh, did an alignment on that and adjusted all the R RF oscillators to their required limit and um, shelved it then waiting for the cabinet now that I got it in the cabinet uh, I had to tweak it uh, quite a bit so technical note when you got radios of that type do it do the RF stages in the cabinet because it will change uh, when you go to slide it in there and everything has got in its place and a place for everything so now uh, back to the I'm gonna try and get that uh, Pilco uh, 53960 ready for this evening scans I've got it readjusted and everything I got the back off of it right now but I got to get it I got to get it out of the way so I can get this one into the end of the thing so expect a video on that later to tonight so um, we'll move in and get that done and get this stage so we can get a check out on it okay we got this 527 in here on the bench now and I'm hoping that the speaker is not going to be unspoken uh, we've managed freeing up this push button rod here this needs to be pushed in to surf the dial with the uh, tuner 
and um, we got that locked in. Uh, we checked all the tubes uh, just to make sure that they were playing good. Uh, the B8 was a little iffy. Well, I've never ran across a B8 that was really exorbitant in in its rating, but um, it's in the low zone, and but not in the toilet. So uh, now what what we did on this here? Let's we'll see if I can do, manage this thing without damaging anything. <laughs> We did go in and replace the coupling cap, but we didn't do anything, nothing else. We replaced the power cord. That's it. Um, we checked everything else to make sure there was no shorts or anything. What I did was, um, hmm, let's see. I got rid of that lamp there because the wire down through there, I didn't want it short enough. This one here. I replaced the lamp in it because the other one didn't check out very good but uh, this wire here is not as bad as the other one was so we're going to leave it go um, other than that I don't think we did anything else to it not much anything else and I got the my case studies out so that I can double check everything uh, we're going to bring it up on the 75 water and um, let let me see. Let me hook the um, let me hook the meter into it, and we'll check the uh, the cathode voltage on the power on the uh, rectifier tube. Hang on. Okay, we're all hooked in, hooked on, locked in. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's fire that bad boy up. We got a, a slight little dimming of the lamp there, 20, 19, 180, mm, 20, 210, 220, we're coming up, the bulb is starting to bulb, uh, We got a little squeal in the from this little piggy piggy. Yeah, oscillator. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty calicons on this little bulb. One hundred and fifty six. I believe this is supposed to be. Yeah, let me see. Let me see. 170, 183. We're a little short. We got a short in something here. Um, yeah, we rocked out there on that. Uh, but we did get a response out of it. We did get a response out of it, and I have a feeling that uh, that the uh, electrolytics didn't didn't um, reform very good, and we probably got a short in one of them. So uh, yeah, we got a short in something. So let me see. Yeah. Mm hmm. So it's going to be a deep dive now. Um, let's see. Yeah. So anyway, we got we got a response out of it. So that's all I needed to hear. Uh, it will uh, kick in later so we'll get busy on this thing and uh, put it in surgery so anyway thanks for watching uh, don't be afraid to leave a comment or a like subscribe if it's your first time 
and we'll see you on the uh, next instance. Uh, hopefully I got time to get to that uh, uh, 53960 so stand by for that so we'll st see you on the next one. Okay one last thing we wanted to cover before we went. I found the short it was in this lamp. Yes. For some reason the lead was not as good as I expected so we'll fire that back up. We're up to two, 200. The bulb is coming back. We're up to 230, 240. That is broadcast. That's our ESPN affiliate. That is our talk radio in um, Prescott Valley. That buzz buzz you hear, that's from my uh, triple threat behind me. Okay, we don't reach our local station here. Um, we'll have to do something with it. Uh, in order to get it dialed in because the short wave won't go down far enough. Um, let's let's bring it up on the yeah bring it up on the other bulb. See if we can get any more out of it. We're up to 260, 260, 270, See, where are you, little life forms? Uh, yeah. Excuse me while I jostle you around and get my cool. Let me plug this in on the back here. I think there's supposed to be a shorting bar on this, but I'm not sure. I'm sure way there. But it's really coming through because of the, the blasting from everything else. Okay. It looks like we're going to have a winner here. So, anyway, thanks for watching. And we're out of here.